Well, hello. Welcome to One Man's Faith today. Hey, and this is St. Patrick's Day. And so how can we not have some Irish blessings, right? Let me give you a few. May the road rise to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face. The rain fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of His hand. How's that one? Here's another one. May you have love that never ends, lots of money, and lots of friends. Health be yours, whatever you do, and may God send many blessings upon you. That's a good one, too. May the sun shine all day long, everything go right, and nothing wrong. May those you love bring love back to you, and may all the wishes you wish come true. You know, some of these have biblical, you know, you know, aspects in them too. Don't you? Do you see that? And we and we are. We're supposed to bless each other. May you have a world of wishes at your command. God and His angels close at hand. Friends and family, their love impart, and Irish blessings in your heart. Amen. All right, a couple more. May God grant you many years into life. For sure, He must be knowing. The earth has angels all too few, and the heaven is overflowing. <laughs> I like that one. It is overflowing. And last one. May you always have work for your hands to do. May your pockets hold always a coin or two. May the sun shine bright on your window pane. May the rainbow be certain to follow each rain. May the hand of a friend always be near you, and may God fill your heart with gladness to cheer you. Good blessings for, for a good St. Patrick's Day. Now, if you don't see this on St. Patrick's Day, you may see it later, but eh, let's go ahead and just pretend, all right, that the day you watch this is St. Patrick's Day. And by the way, who is St. Patrick? Did you ever think about that? You know, we hear there are kind of rumors and all that go around about St. Patrick. There, there's even one about him getting rid of all the snakes in Ireland and things like that. And, you know, now, you know, because he left so long ago, there have just been so many rumors, <laughs> for lack of a better word, legends, there you go, legends that, 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 that have come up about St. Patrick. But St. Patrick was a real man. He, um, he was actually born in Britain to wealthy parents, uh, and he lived near the end of the 14th or the 4th century. So he lived near the end of the 4th century, which is in the 300, 400 year period. He believed, it's believed that he died March 17th around 460 A.D. Although his father was a Christian deacon, it has been suggested that he probably took on the role because of tax incentives, and there is no evidence that Patrick came from a, came from a particularly religious family. At the age of 16, Patrick was taken prisoner by a group of Irish raiders who were attacking his family's estate. They transported him to Ireland where he spent six years in captivity. During that time, he worked as a shepherd outdoors in the country away from people. Lonely and afraid, he turned to his religion for solace, becoming a devout Christian. After more than six years as a prisoner, Patrick escaped. According to his writings, a voice which he believed to be God's spoke to him in a dream, telling him it was time to leave. And so Patrick walked 200 miles uh, to the Irish coast, escaped to Britain, and reported, his, and, uh, and reported that he experienced a second revelation. An angel in a dream tells him to return to Ireland as a missionary. So Patrick goes through and uh, goes through a course of religious studies, which last about 15 years. And after his ordination, he was sent to Ireland with a dual mission: 
to minister to Christians already living in Ireland and to begin to convert the and to begin to convert the Irish. So that that's what that's what his job was. Um, Patrick did something different than most missionaries at that time, and and, and this carried forth. You know, even up until well, even up almost till today, when we send missionaries out, we try to change their way and what they worship and how they worship, instead of trying to incorporate the fact that maybe they're already worshiping God, or they have ways that can be incorporated into it, and that's what he did. Patrick chose to incorporate traditional ritual into his into his lessons. Instead of saying, hey, all of what you're doing is wrong. And, it, and, it, and he converted many people that way. Some of the things that came from that were um, he incorporated a, a, a son with the cross, giving us what is called the, 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 Celtic, the Celtic cross. Um, and so this is, this is, this is where St. Patrick comes from. He was kidnapped as a young boy. He spent six years in captivity, came away, and God said, I want you to go back, go back, and convert hearts. Amen? Amen. Father, we just thank you for this day, and we thank you, Lord, that you are great and how you use us. Lord, may our ears be open to hear you as you speak to us and as we as we learn to follow that anointing. And we just thank you, Lord, go out over the airwaves today, touch lives, bring healing in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, before we go to a break, a couple of things, um, and let's start with the newest one, and that's going to be March 28th, which is in uh, about two weeks. We're going to do a Passover Seder, which is a Passover dinner on the 28th at 6 o'clock at New Hope Fellowship. The cost is $10 for a couple or a family. Um, however, you know, you, you know, whether you have a whole family or not that, that you want to bring, I would just ask that you call New Hope, 751-1867, so that um, we can get a head count to know how many to set up for and how much, how much food to make. It'll be our traditional chicken dinner, which is about a quarter chicken, uh, a potato, uh, and 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 Simone, which is a mixture of uh, pineapple and uh, uh, sweet potato, and I forgot what the other ingredient is in it. But but it's a but it's, it's going to be a good meal, and we're going to go through the Passover, and we're going to look and see how Jesus fits into that. Okay, the week after, which is April fourth. That's a Saturday. There's going to be a blood moon bonfire because there's supposed to be a blood moon that night. We're going to do a bonfire down at the property on Mance. If you were to go down Homestead, you would turn left on Mance, and it's the second property down. There should be signs. You should be able to see the fire. It'll be from 7 to 9 uh, on April 4th. Uh, and if you have things in your house or things you own that you know or you're not sure of and you don't think you should have them or, you know, you know, even if you still just have stuff laying around from your past life or whatever, or, or let's say you've been into stuff. Let's say you have magazines you shouldn't have or something like that, and you want to get right with God and get rid of them, well, bring them and throw them into the fire and, and just proclaim being cleansed by, by, by that act of faith. If you need a scriptural reference, Acts 19.19 19 would be a scriptural reference for that. So that is the fourth uh, at starting at seven. Then the fifth Sunday morning, there will be a resurrection Sunday sunrise service. Uh, now, some people don't, when I say that, they don't know what that means. I'm talking Easter, okay? Sunrise service, and that'll be the fifth. Uh, I know there's several going on, uh, but the one I know of will be at Petrick Park, at 6.30 uh, at the basketball court there. So that's the 5th. And then the 7th. Uh, isn't, isn't that right, Noah? The 7th? Is that the movie? Yeah, the movie night. Okay, the movie night is the 7th, and we'll be showing Left Behind, <laughs> of all movies to be shown. Huh? Uh, 
it's the newer version with Nicolas Cage. So April 7th at 7 o'clock. Mark your calendars for these things and uh, come on out. So we've got Passover coming and, and we need to just know how many are coming just so we can make sure we have enough food. Um, then bl the bonfire on the 4th, Resurrection Sunday and, and the sunrise service is on the 5th. Uh, and then April 7th is the, is the movie and it'll be the Left Behind movie starring Nicolas Cage. So, hey, we got enough stuff going on around here to keep you busy. Isn't that right? Um, and so, you know, you know, plan, plan for these things. Also, um, I talked a little bit about it before, you, uh, the blood moon. There's another blood moon that will come in uh, the end of September, early October at the time of the Feast of Tabernacles. And a revival is being planned for that, for that weekend when that... Um, when that occurs. I don't know the exact dates, but that's far enough in advance that I'll let you know. So um, as soon as it, as soon as that gets settled, um, we'll let you know. As far as the bonfire, there will be, uh, there will be people there to lead worship and we'll just, you know, we'll just pray and have a good time. Um, and, uh, and just, you know, just see what the Lord does. So I just want to give you those things and, and, and uh, let's just um, mark on your calendars and then say, Lord, do you want me to go to these or which ones you want me to go to? Or, you know, if they all sound interesting to you, hey, go for it. Go for it. Don't, you know, don't let anything, anything stop you. And keep in mind, God may speak to you just as he did to St. Patrick. He may say, hey, I want you to go someplace. If God tells you to go, go. If God tells you to go, go. Don't say, I got to think about it. All right? Okay, well, I've got to take a break, so let's take a break, and I'll be right back. 